Well, shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the Hotlight Zone. And you might be here on this video because of the intriguing title. And that is, Primer Flame is a Living Creature. What do I mean by that? And you'll see that once again, the idea is that you won't see this kind of stuff on other YouTube videos as a rule. So why do I say that Primer Flame is a Living Creature? Well, flame is actually a living creature. Talk to a firefighter and they'll tell you all about it. The flame consumes fuel just like a living creature does. It has exhaust waste products just like a living creature has. Flame has character. It wants to move outward. It expands. It grows. It is aggressive. All of these things. And primer flame is an important component of what we call internal ballistics. The ashen of the shot while it's still in the gun. While it's still in the cartridge. Sometimes flame behaves like a liquid. Other times it behaves like a gas. And if we understand or take into consideration the characteristics of flame as it pertains to primers, it'll help us to create more consistent ammunition. Now to help us understand, I'm going to take these four 44 Magnum cases. They happen to be the CBC from Magtech Brass. But let's look at those primer pockets. They've been cleaned but we'll look at it under magnification. Now notice that in the primer pocket itself, the floor of the primer pocket is not perfectly uniform. So imagine the primer cup is sitting right there in that corner because that's where it bottoms out. And that corner is not perfectly uniform. And on some brass, it's even more. But neither is the floor perfectly flat, nor are the corners perfectly flat. There are little glitches in the corners. Now notice in this one, that it's a little bit more uniform, but still, that corner is not perfectly square. Now the primer, of course, is perfectly square there in that corner. So wouldn't it be nice to mate squareness with squareness? And that's why we use tools like the RCBS Case Prep Center. Now if you can find one of these when they go on sale, it's a very good tool to use because primer pocket uniforming is not a job that is easily done manually. But with a tool like this, makes it a piece of cake. What this has in there is a cutter that's carbide and it's shaped exactly the way a primer pocket needs to be to be perfectly uniform. And so when we run this tool, and here's the four cases, we run this tool like this and go ahead and uniform the primer pocket. Now, some of you have commented that that seems like a lot of brass that came out of there. That came out of this bunch of brass right here that we all uniform the primer pockets. And that's normal. That just shows you how much uniforming is necessary on just this small batch of cases. Because you have primer pockets that are not perfectly shaped as per this cutter. So now look at the case on the left that's been uniformed versus the case on the right. Do you see how the seat right in the corner is much more uniform? The floor of the primer pocket is now completely flat and the corner is perfectly square. 
That Remington on the right happens to be fairly square, but the one that's been uniformed is better. Now this allows perfectly square seating of the primer in the pocket and can only help increase the consistency of the primer going off and creating the flame in the first place. Then the flame goes ahead and kind of vortexes around and with a perfectly flat primer pocket floor that vortex will seek out that flash hole because the creature of the primer flame wants to move forward and expand and so it's going to find that flash hole. Now notice how when we squared off the floor of the primer pocket we actually also created a square corner of the entry of the flash hole. Now when the primer flame behaves like a fluid that sharp corner in there can't help the entry of the flame into the flash hole and you don't hear anywhere that that flash hole should be beveled there to create a better funneling effect for the primer flame creature to enter. So let's take care of it. So the information you're about to hear is not in any reloading manual and you've never heard it anywhere else before. So take your RCBS flash hole deburring tool and a lot of the other companies make these also but Lee doesn't make one of these. Why is a mystery but you go ahead and put that into the flash hole from this side here and then give it a little bit of force but not a lot and just go ahead and deburr and bevel off and cause the corner of that flash hole to be beveled, funneled a little bit. And then give it a little free spin to remove any loose burrs that you create. Now this doesn't weaken the brass at all because you're not taking away a lot of brass here. You're just, just breaking that corner so that that flat 90 degree entry to the flash hole has been beveled. And that will allow the fluid of the primer flame as it vortexes in that square primer pocket to go ahead and make a jet right into the flash hole. Now see if you can see that little funnel that we created. You see that? That should help the flame get in there because it wants to get through that flash hole and then burst out on the other side. That's what that flame wants to do. And that's actually why we want to get rid of that burr that's inside the flash hole. There's that burr in there. And of course we've already shown you that you go ahead and get rid of that burr by using the same flash hole deburring tool of course to go in there and make sure you get all the burr and there's the brass coming out you see and there's that same case with the burr removed now we have to ask the question since you bring this up is it, isn't it possible that others have thought of this before, especially bench rest shooters, to go ahead and deburr the side of the flash hole over here? Well, there's different reasons why. One might be that they're trying to maintain an edge. They found something that may work well, it gives them a little bit more edge, maybe not. And so it's information is not shared and it's possible that it's been thought of before but the thinking was that well that can't possibly do anything positive but if that's true then why are we deburring this side of the flash hole because isn't the entry of the primer creature just as important as the exit we want to go in well, right? 
so we can go out well, go in well, and then go out well. Isn't that the whole idea? We should actually love that. So I submit to you that doing this is beneficial to go ahead and deburr that entry. The thinking may even be that doing this just isn't worth it, so why bother telling anybody about it? Now people say that doing this is just a lot of work, but really it isn't because it doesn't take any thinking. So you can do this while watching the U.S. Open Golf Tournament on TV on Father's Day. So, good shooting to all of you out there. You can take this information and file it or put it in the trash can or perhaps even think about doing it. It's all up to you. And thanks for watching. Happy Father's Day to you. Bye for now.